Hello graduates, Sussex Central Class of 2020. This is Dr. Layfield and I wanted to explain a little bit about what graduation is going to look like this year and what you can expect in the uh, days to come. Uh, it's simply a little more than I can put in, a, in an alert now, a phone call, or even an email. So I wanted to explain some logistics for you. As you know, we are going to have an outdoor graduation ceremony. There will actually be four of them. Uh, it will be held on Thursday, June 18th. Our rain date will be uh, Saturday, June the 20th. Hopefully we can uh, cross our fingers for good weather on the 18th. Each ceremony will be uh, probably about 45 minutes in length, staggered two hours apart to give us time to sanitize and uh, a stagger arrival times for the, for the next class or for the next group of the class of 2020. Uh, 10 a.m., 12 noon, uh, 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. The 10 a.m. ceremony, uh, each, each graduate will be given four tickets and they'll be color coded based on the time of day of the ceremony. So our 10 o'clock ceremony will be blue tickets. Our noon ceremony will be gold tickets. Orange tickets will be used for two o'clock and purple tickets for our four o'clock ceremony. Uh, the academic top 10, the IB diploma candidates, along with uh, our class president, vice president, uh, valedictorian, salutatorian, will attend the first ceremony along with those students alphabetically from Adkins to Demir. At our 12 o'clock ceremony, it will be uh, graduates Derrickson through Langford, and two o'clock will be uh, Lasher through Ramirez Sandoval, and finally, our last uh, ceremony will be Ramirez Sandoval through Zunin Ordaz. We will be uh, giving out specific information about these groups um, when we uh, hand out tickets and yard signs and other materials, which will be this coming Monday, Monday the 15th. From 9 until 11, we'll be distributing uh, the tickets, the color-coded tickets. We have individual yard signs for our graduates. You may have seen these popping up from other schools. Ours came in this week. I happen to think ours are a little better than the rest of the schools, but I'm a little biased. Uh, we are not, we're not going to be handing out programs at graduation. We have the programs being printed uh, Friday and um, they're going to be, basically everything's going to be put in envelopes to give to graduates and it's going to be a drive-through process. We're going to ask that everyone come through our, uh, nor our southernmost gate, excuse me, our northernmost gate by the student parking lot, uh, wrap around the staff parking lot by the flagpole and it'll be a drive-through process where we give the yard signs, the tickets, the programs, yearbooks for anyone who has ordered those and any specific clubs, FFA, Aspira, other clubs have some items that I know they want to give to graduates as well. We will hand that in the car and then we'll ask that everyone loop around and exit out the southernmost gate down by the pavilion in the baseball field. Once again, that's going to be from 9 until 11 uh, on, on Monday. Uh, we're asking that all families arrive in one vehicle. I know that this is a burden for many particular split, uh, split families. And I understand split families, uh, I'm not going to expect them to arrive in one vehicle, but I will say condense it to two. What we don't want is for the graduate to be in one vehicle and the four ticketed family members all arrive in their own vehicle. We have, uh, we have strict limitations on social distancing with our student parking lot, which is where everyone will arrive, and they want us being in every other space and things of that nature. So one vehicle, if at all possible, split families may arrive in two vehicles. Once we enter the stadium, we're asking that all families obviously sit together. Uh, either in groups of four or groups of two. We're going to have clear, clear markings on the bleachers six feet apart. This will be directed by our constables and our other staff. Uh, when the graduates, everyone's to stay in their car once they arrive until uh, our constables and other staff uh, start releasing row by row within the student parking lot. Once you enter into the stadium, uh, patrons will drop off their tickets. The graduates will go directly onto the stadium field where our uh, staff will be able to seat them. In their, uh, in their alphabetical seating arrangement, and then the staff can explain what goes on after that. And we're asking that the families at that point in time, we're going to populate from the top of the bleachers down. We understand that uh, there will have handicap parking and handicap accessibility either on the track or in the front row of the bleachers. Once the home bleachers fill up, we'll then populate the uh, wayside bleachers, and we will have other uh, portable bleachers brought in from our baseball and softball field for any overflow seating as needed. Um, once the graduates uh, take go onto the field, as I said, uh, they're going to be guided by staff and then we'll await the awarding of diplomas. The national anthem will play. I will do a very brief introduction. Mr. Reed will have some remarks as he is retiring this year and he will introduce each of the class speakers in a brief introduction. Our speakers will give a very brief speech. Mr. Steele will um, 
certify the diplomas, and then we'll get rolling with the awarding of diplomas. Basically, I'm just asking that the students follow the lead of the staff member in their row. They'll stand up, they'll line up uh, on the right side of all the seats uh, on the stadium, six feet apart, and when their names are called, any senior who's uh, earned an award or um, a scholarship that has been presented already, we will announce that with their name, and if it comes with a a certificate, a medal, or other things of that nature, that'll be handed to the graduate as they come across the stage um, and then grab their diploma. Diplomas will be placed on a table directly in front of the podium. And as graduates walk off stage, they'll be congratulated by myself, Superintendent Steele, and possibly uh, one or more board members. We're gonna then ask graduates to loop back around, fall into their row, stay standing until the entire row is there, and then everyone will be seated at once. Uh, as far as wearing masks, uh, all parents and family will be required to wear masks uh, throughout the ceremony. Graduates will also do so, but when their names are called to award their diploma, we're, we're asking they can take their mask off at that point because we want to see their smiles when they get their picture taken. We are also doing a three camera live stream with uh, one camera, I believe that's going to be more of a broad setting from the bleachers, one in front of the podium so we can capture that special moment, and then one camera just off stage after the diploma um, is awarded where the graduate can walk by the camera and say hi to folks who can't be here or to their friends who might be in another ceremony. We're trying to make it as special as possible. The part of the ceremony which probably bothers me and, and the parents the most, but we, as we said, in order to get the waiver through uh, to the state, we had to be um, very clear on what we did afterwards. So once, uh, once each class speaker does the tassel ceremony, we're not gonna be permitting folks to throw their caps up in the air as we normally do. And typically at a normal graduation, families would come down to the field to, to see their graduates and to take pictures with them and their friends and all of them grouped together. That unfortunately simply is still not permitted by the state at this point in time. So once the tassel ceremony is over, all graduates will remain in their seats and we will clear the bleachers row by row as quickly as possible from both the home and the away sides. And we're asking that all families go directly to your vehicles. We're not gonna be allowed to permit any lingering or things of that nature. And once the stadium bleachers are cleared, all of the graduates will be released row by row, going directly to their family's vehicle, and then um, exiting through the back of the school and out our southernmost uh, exit here by the baseball field in the pavilion. That will give us time to sanitize all of the bleachers, the, the, the graduates' chairs, the, the, ble um, the stage, any bathrooms, or restrooms will be open, but I'm strongly urging folks, please go before you, you come to school. It's going to be a relatively quick ceremony. And, um, you know, there's only, I think, uh, there's only two men's rooms and two ladies' rooms out there. So please, um, they will be open, but we'll be sanitizing those between, uh, between ceremonies as well. This, uh, starting, or the arrival times for each ceremony will be staggered every 15 minutes. One group will be 45 minutes before the ceremony, the next group a half an hour before, and the last group 15 minutes before. Specific directions on when you're to arrive and which ceremony you're in uh, will be handed out um, on Monday, uh, Monday the 15th when we do a graduation tickets and, and other items. The dress code, uh, it's gonna be in the middle of the day. It could be very hot, I don't know. It's it, Thursday, so a long way away and the weatherman's often not right from day to day. Um, we typically ask that gentlemen wear uh, you know, khakis, navy or, or black pants with a shirt and tie. Um, that might be a bit oppressive. So I'm just saying dress appropriately professional. Um, ladies, we're asking that anything you wear, typically we ask that it be a light colored dress. I would like um, our our, our female graduates to wear something light in color because the darker uh, the darker material you're wearing under the gown with the gold gown sometimes it makes uh, makes your gown look off color from the rest of your uh, your graduating classmates so uh, it may be a little soggy out there so I'm probably not going to recommend flip flops or high heels either so make sure that your footwear is professional. Um, Graduates who do not plan to attend, I understand that we're going to have some graduates who simply uh, don't wish to attend for one reason or another, and that's, that's perfectly okay. We're, I'm asking that all of those graduates please uh, call the school to let us know. We can pull the diplomas and schedule a time on, on Friday uh, or sometime next week, or uh, excuse me, the week after graduation uh, to um, have a time to come in and get your diploma. So we will definitely arrange that and make it a special moment for you as well, just individually when you come to school to get that. Um, all staff coming to this uh, ceremony or working the, uh, working the ceremony will be parked in the visitor parking lot in front of the school. Any uh, families that arrive uh, 
prior to their scheduled arrival time. For example, if you're part of the 12 o'clock ceremony and you're to arrive at 1115, if you show up you know, at 1030, we're going to direct all of, those, all of those folks to the staff parking lot in front of the school until we can be done with the first ceremony and exit all of those families out and then stage the next group of graduates uh, in the student parking lot. So please try to arrive as close to your arrival time as possible and definitely don't be late. If, you are, if you're a part of the 10 o'clock ceremony and you're rolling up here at uh, 10.05, we're not going to be able to allow you to participate in that ceremony at that point in time. I believe that covers it. Uh, we're going to have detailed directions we're giving out on Monday. I definitely look forward to seeing everyone Monday as we distribute these items. We still have a few folks who haven't picked up caps and gowns. And I look, uh, look forward even more to seeing everyone on Thursday uh, as we celebrate the 51st annual commencement of the Sussex Central Class of 2020. Congratulations, y'all. You did it. We'll see you next week.